Welcome back everybody. I tell you what, I've been missing off your screens for about a half an hour and it has been one of the most fascinating half hours of my life. I've managed to take a tour of this museum and uh, unfortunately we're not going to go upstairs but we have got visuals of this museum and exactly what it does show but it is incredible to come and visit this and we're going to go inside in a short while but we need to give you a little bit of a setup piece though because we're going to take you back 50 years ago to when this first heart transplant was done. A heart transplant that was set to revolutionize the way that medical science is done and operated and seen by the world. Dr. Chris Barnard and his team performed the very first heart surgery right here where I am standing in this, uh, in this facility, one floor up. It's absolutely incredible to see. So since that first human uh, to human heart transplant was conducted by a team led by cardiac uh, pioneer, Professor Christian Nietling Barnard, uh, it made headlines the world over and it changed the landscape of cardiac surgery. In the early hours of the 3rd of December 1967, the lives of Barnard, Denise Davel and Louis Wyshkansky became intertwined forever. It's 1967. And 25-year-old Denise Darvel and her family are on their way to visit friends. Denise and her mother Myrtle are hit by a drunk driver while crossing Salt River's main road. The young woman sustained serious head injuries and is taken to Grutteskir Hospital where resuscitation attempts are fruitless. Her father, Edward, is approached and he gives permission for what would become a monumental surgical procedure. Louis Washkansky would become the recipient. The 53-year-old man was in cardiac failure and his family prepared for the inevitable. By that time, scientific research into heart transplantation was well established worldwide. But it would be this man, Professor Christian Nietling Barnard and his team of specialists that would become the first to do it. The donor heart is prepared by Dr. Marius Barnard and his team. In the adjoining theatre, Professor Christian Barnard and his team wait for the heart. Washkansky's heart has been removed. When he cut Mr. Washkansky's heart out and I got the opportunity to peep over the drapes and I looked inside and saw this empty chest of this man without a heart in it, I thought it was really scary. Um, I couldn't believe it that just this machine was keeping this patient alive without his heart. Professor Barnard carefully sewed the donor heart into place in Washkansky's chest in an operation that lasted nearly five hours. Then he gave it a defibrillating shock um, to get it to beat in a, a contract in a more a normal rhythm. And that was at two minutes to six on the Sunday morning, the 3rd of December, and then everybody started smiling and laughing and shouting congratulations, Professor Barnard, and we were all so happy. Washkansky lived only 18 days and succumbed to pneumonia. But the unthinkable had been done, and since then, more than 500 successful heart transplants have been performed at Grutteskir Hospital. I'm very grateful that I was able to live another 30 years after the first transplant. And also I was, uh, I'm very grateful that I was able to see the advances made in this field and uh, to live to the day to when uh, heart transplantation is a very successful operation. And what's more is that the patient who lived after the operation live a very a, a virtue, a normal life. The monumental achievement is a testament of selfless love, courage and bravery. But it's also a story of a young woman, a man granted a second chance, and the daring genius of a little boy from the Karua, Christian Nietlin Barnard. He passed away in 2001 at the age of 78.
At the time of the surgery, the world had absolutely no idea that this was being conducted behind these doors behind me. Uh, they told no one, no one knew except the people that were inside. This had been practiced for many, many years before it had actually happened, but using a real human heart trying to save another individual was uh, bound to be something that was going to be rather controversial, but if a success would change the face of the world, and that's exactly what it does. Let me take you inside now. So we walk through the doors of this uh, heart of Cape Town Museum, and this is the home to the world's very first heart transplant. And as soon as you do get in here, you are welcomed by this huge banner uh, that's showing the 50th anniversary of the first human heart transplant with the face of Dr. Chris Barnard on it. A very handsome face, I might add, and something that uh, I think was also what won the world over with his charm as well. So as you come in, Wim uh, Pitt is standing right over there. He, of course, is uh, the curator of this museum. And also joining us now, who's going to take us on a little bit of a tour, is uh, Tracy, come on out. Please help us. And it's so nice of you to have us with you uh, here in this museum. How are you doing this morning? I'm fine, thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks for having us. A pleasure. No, thank you. Trace, I mean, this is, let, let's walk, because I, I think we've got so much to get through in such a short time. I mean, if we look at this museum and some of the things that are on display here, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, how long has it been open for now? Uh, the, the, this particular revamped museum was 2008. Okay. But there was always been a museum here, but the, the hospital um, put that museum on, and then we revamped it. A private gentleman called Henny Jabe revamped the museum in 2008 to what it looks like today. So, I mean, these are, this is the, exactly, let's go around, because there's a beautiful photograph I think that we should begin with over here. And it's a photograph of uh, Professor Barnard with Nelson Mandela. I mean, these are the two most photographed South Africans, as the picture sure. says. Um, yes, um, and loved South Africans as well. Um, I, everybody that I've spoken to across the board absolutely loved Chris Barnard. Yeah. He was an amazing guy. Yeah. Quite a character, though. He was. He was, uh, you know, he was a very intelligent man. Um, he, he knew his job. He was very charming, as you said. And I met him when I was 12, and I thought he was the most handsome man that I'd ever met. So even 12-year-olds were impressed. <laughs> exactly. And he is. He is. He still is, by any standard, a very good-looking man. Um, let's move on over here, because I think this is where he didn't work alone. I mean, and that's no, something we need to understand. Please come very, on over. Very big team. Um, let's meet the team, shall we? I don't know all of them, but um, Chris Barnard put a, a team of 40-odd uh, people together. Um, one of the first people that Chris Barnard actually put on his team was his own younger brother, Marius Barnard, who, as you know, was an incredibly good cardiothoracic surgeon as well. Um, uh, the team was made up of uh, people that um, obviously knew each other. They had been working together. Uh, Chris really chose the best of the best yeah. um, when he put his team together. Um, it was a huge team because obviously they, they didn't know who they would need and you know so obviously the, as time went on they could par these teams down but in the beginning he just got everybody he thought he might possibly need. Yeah. So his team was huge. Obviously they're not this big today. Yeah, of course. I mean at that time I mean nobody nobody was doing this. This was something that which you were telling me there was at the time a loop in, in the constitution of South Africa and the law of South Africa about being brain dead and still being able to use a beating heart. Well that was the thing. You see Chris Barnard actually trained in America between uh, 1956 and around about 1959 at the University of Minnesota and it was uh, he was trained by the Americans so he was doing it as per the Americans and the Americans obviously had to follow their own law now their law said um, in order to get to before you could get into a donor two do uh, doctors had to certify the donor dead and the donor's brain and heart had to totally stop but the heart as you know is the one organ in your body the minute it stops working it starts to deteriorate incredibly quickly so uh, Chris Barnard did it like that came back to South Africa and carried on doing his research the same way but he wasn't getting much uh, success and then when he when he read the South African law he realized our law was written slightly differently and uh, he, he realized he could use a brain dead donor so he was the first man in the world to use a brain dead donor and obviously that gave him an advantage over the American doctors because he could get to the heart while it was still beating because as you know if somebody's brain dead they, they are they're clinically dead anyway but the bodies are still the body's still working and the heart is still beating so the most advantage. the most fascinating part of this museum is upstairs though and uh, we've got some footage that we're going to roll now and show our viewers so uh, perhaps you can you can talk talk to uh, us uh, about what's happening upstairs I mean it's there's an office there's a room dedicated to the donor there's also the operating theaters exactly as it was talk wow. us through it well, the whole upstairs is actually where the transplants were actually done so this is you actually walking through an incredibly special piece of history the two operating rooms were the two operating rooms where they did the transplant the rest of the that area up there we've made into the museum and each room has got a theme in it we go from the laboratories where 
where they did the research on dogs. Uh, these laboratories were actually up at the University of Cape Town, so we've remodeled them down there. We, we, we pay tribute to the donor and the donor family, so we have a room for her. We have a, a Chris Barnard sitting in his office, which scares uh, the clients. Scared the, the daylights out of yeah. me. I thought he was sitting there, yeah. and the I was like, oh, oh. Like <laughs> Madam Tussauds is like very, very ner it's nerve wracking if you're by yourself. Yeah. And then the whole operator, the two operating rooms, we've got a huge amount of the original equipment, and both operating rooms are done like Madam Tussauds. So it looks like the two teams are busy working yeah. in the donor and the recipient room. It's just absolutely phenomenal. I mean, if just to come back, and if you can in your mind imagine what we're standing in right now, just history like nothing else. And I'm going to ask the cameraman as I uh, link to an ad break just to have a look at this photograph because this was uh, this was Dr. Chris Barnard as he was at the time when he operated. This isn't on the day. Of course, on the day, nobody knew this was taking place. And as uh, Tracy told me, uh, after they'd performed it, it was a great success. Uh, the team stood together and Chris said, should we tell someone that we've done this? And they did, and the world changed. And as you can imagine, the photographers, the press, and everything thereafter was immense. Tracy, thank you. Thank you very much. So much more to come from here. Do stay tuned to Morning Live.